Uh, are we still doing the draft needs? It looks like they disappeared. Damn right we the are. Jaguars uh, draft needs. Draft right. needs time, uh, the, baby. My, my, my computer is on the fritz. The Jaguars can't exit the 2024 draft without addressing what, Chris? Well, I look at the Jaguars, and again, we, we were kind of talking off air right during the break, right? The, the AFC South, when you look at it as a whole, you go, it's four teams that are pretty well-constructed rosters, right? You know, I'm not saying they're perfect. It's not wow at every spot, but there's like it's four teams where I look at it and go, there, there's not like glaring issues, or you gotta go, whoa! If they don't address this, they are screwed for the year, right? So the Jaguars, a lot of good things. The things, one just off the bat, I think they could use a speed receiver, right? I don't think it's a necessity, but when you talk about Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, and Gabe Davis, that's not the fastest crew in the world. When especially when you talk about Zay Jones and Gabe Davis, that's not that's not scaring anybody. Right. That's like, hey, they're going to be, you know, 10 to 15 to 20 yards. They're not going much farther down the field than that. And Christian Kirk, who can do that, he's not known to be just this crazy burner that way either. So I think they could use that. But most importantly is the corner position. The corner position, I think, has to be addressed here. Right. They got they got um, uh, one of my favorite corners in all of football in Tyson Campbell, who was phenomenal. But he was, you know, had a few injury issues last year. They just signed Ronald Darby, who we know there is up there in age. Right. So it's not only for the future, but for depth and, you know, some younger bodies there. I think corner is the number one position I look at for the Jags that they need to address in the draft. Yeah, I agree with you completely. Look, they thought they were keeping Calvin Ridley until the Titans swooped in. They were yeah. trying to play it cute, trying to avoid the upgraded draft pick to the Falcons by not signing him before the start of the league year. And then the start of the league year came along and Calvin Ridley ended up taking the offer that the Titans made. So they're in a little bit of a hole there. And there's pressure on this team because just like the other teams in the division, they, they are good. They underachieved last year. And, you know, yesterday when we were doing the Bill Belichick destinations, one thing that occurred to me after we finished that draft, I think the Jaguars are a potential place as well because I could see Shad Khan, who has cycled through plenty of coaches and general managers during his time owning the team, I could see him thinking, you know, I I could go all in with Bill Belichick. I mean, he had Tom Coughlin there, a Belichick-style executive, when, when he was yeah, running the whole right. show. Uh, he got smitten by Urban Meyer. Yeah, I could see him become smitten by Doug Bill Marone was if, a part, yeah that kind of guy from that school. Be. Right, yeah. yeah, right. That school of coaching. I hear you there. I, I'm with you. Hey, the Jaguars. I'll say if we could just bring up their free agency thing once again. It's pretty damn good. They filled in some holes here. They made their O line better. If they could stay healthy at tackle, that'll be a big deal, right? But the upgraded center and then their front seven. The 49ers releasing Eric Armstead and them being able to sign him. To go along with, you know, Trayvon Walker, the middle linebackers they got there. You know, they got something special. They got some good pieces there where Bill Belichick would go, ooh, the Jaguars aren't so bad. Maybe I will think about that. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.